I had a pretty simple a pretty simple day today. Um, I went to a high school, and I only subbed today for like an hour, and then um, took a nap, and then I I had two school sites to go to. Yeah, I still praise dance. Um, I actually teach dance. I'm a dance teacher. That's why I'm still in my dancing gear. I just came straight from practice here. Like, if you guys see me in, like, all black, it's because, like, ever in any of my videos, it's because I, I just came home. I just, like, started preaching right away. Mm -hmm. Um. And so, yeah, you know, Jesus just sometimes puts a heart of worship in people. And I still dance, like, a lot. I just, like... Like, I love it. It's my obsession. Um, and it's, like, the one thing like, in my life where it's, like, I just worked really hard to get good at it, you know? Like, really, like, if you want to be good at something, you got to work. Like, you got to work. Um, so, thank you. God bless you, Sister Rachel. Sin free, yeah. Um, how are you sin free? Um, so, the Bible says... That those that abide in Jesus don't sin. Um, so basically what the Christian walk is about is under the old law, it was impossible to be fully free from sin. But when Jesus died for us, he made a way so that we can have the Holy Spirit and especially the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which gives you that power and that anointing to get you free from sin. So Jesus made the way back to the Father. And if you guys don't know, like, God cannot be one with sin. He can't be one with sin. So when, so when Jesus made a way back to the Father, he also made a way so that you could be free from sin. Jesus is fully God and fully man. And he was tempted in every single way that we're tempted. But he still didn't sin. So now if we, as his disciples, we have that same access to the Holy Spirit because he died on the cross for us then how much more can we also overcome sin? So sin is the root of all evil. Sin is sin is the root of every single issue in this entire world. And when you sin, you come into agreement with Satan. And you become, a, you, you actually worship Satan each time that you sin. And Jesus, who hates sin, because God hates sin, because sin is evil. He doesn't want you to keep on sinning. He wouldn't die for you so that you would stay in sin. He died for you so that you could get free from sin. That's why 1 John says that he was manifested for the reason of overcoming the works of the devil. So that literally is the sole reason why he died on the cross, was to get you free from sin. The issue is, is that a lot of Christians are preaching a lukewarm gospel and they're saying that sin is your portion and it's not. And that's, that's keeping a yoke of bondage on people's lives. Like you have to actually renew your mind. You cannot do anything that you don't believe is possible. So you, before you can even get free from sin, you first have to know that it's possible. You have to know what the word says. The word says that those that abide in him do not sin. The word says that those that are born of him cannot sin. Because if his seed remains in you, then you cannot sin. It says that 1 John 3, 6, 1 John 3, 9. And people will say, oh, anyone who says that um, they don't have sin, they call themselves a liar. You when when it says that in first john it's saying past tense so we've all sinned in the past but that's not our present our present is that we are children of god and so yes we have all sinned past tense but that's why we confess to the father and we live a life of repentance okay so that we no longer sin you, you just gotta read romans 6 then everyone says, oh, what about Romans 7? Okay, what about Romans 8? It's like the same script. And that's how I know it's demons lying to you guys. It's the devil lying to you guys. Because no one has any other argument. Like, except for everyone just brings up Romans 7 and 1 John 1. That's all they have. Like, that's literally all they have. But there is no other scriptures that reinforces that. Jesus is, God's hatred for sin is so it's it like his his wrath his passion his hatred for, for sin is so like all encompassing it just goes beyond words like he hates it so much that he hates when when people are in bondage to it that he sent his only son to get you free from sin 
and anyone i people that push me back on this it's because they they've fallen in love with with sin more than god's precepts and i have had like people you know get upset with me whenever i preach what the word says it says it in the word and it's always been because they're sinning behind closed doors and they don't want to let go of this sin every single time every single time it's like the devil is so easy to, to predict you know <coughs> spicy <coughs> oh my gosh No one is sinless but God. Isn't that what the Bible says? The Bible says that he is faithful to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. You know, unrighteousness means sin. Because sin is a transgression of the law. Okay? So, he is faithful to cleanse us of all sin. What, like, what, like, what else do you think that means? That means all sin. Like, you guys need to just stop thinking that Jesus is so far away from you. They're thinking that you're saying you've never had sin before. If they think that I'm saying I never had sin before, that's a comprehension issue. And that's above my pay grade. <laughs> that, that goes beyond what I'm capable of. That is something that Jesus just got to deal with. You know, I'm, I'm praying that the Lord redeems... The education system. You know, bring back phonics. 2023. Um, what do you mean by sin free? Sin free is I'm no longer living in sin. So I don't live in sin. I don't partake in sin. I don't have sinful thoughts. No sinful desires. You know, and that come. You just have to let Jesus take over your life. So with the Christian walk. It's not about how long you're you're a Christian. It's about how yielded you are as a Christian. And I just gave up everything for God. And I just allowed him to take out my old wineskin and give me a new wineskin. And that's that's the important part of the, of the Christian walk is that you renew yourself according to what the word says. You can't make up your own doctrine in your head. You can't because all this stuff like we're always going to be in sin. That's made up doctrine that is not even in the word. Who does Jesus return with? He returns with the saints, the saints. Do we know what a saint is? A saint is somebody who does not have sin. So how is it possible that he returns with saint, if with saints, if apparently you guys are telling me that we're always going to sin? No, it's because he's he's faithful to cleanse us of all unrighteousness, like the word says, so that we are not only forgiven of our sins, but we live an empowered Christian life where we are we have overcome the power of sin. When Jesus died on the cross, sin was became a defeated monarch. Okay? Exactly, Alyssa. And when and when you say you're always going to sin, you're speaking death over yourself. Exactly, Jade. Very good really really good he said go and sin no more there was that other person wait i'm gonna find the verse hold on that said um we all know that that god that god cannot like communicate with a sinner hold on Um, John 9.31. And I'm only going live until my apostle comes on live. Okay, John 9.31. Let me look, look this up. <laughs> okay. So the man says, 
The man answered and said to them, Why, this is a marvelous thing that you do not know where he is from, yet he has opened my eyes. Now we know that God does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears them. Since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. So, it was common knowledge in, in you know, biblical times that God does not hear from sinners. And that's why there had to be all those rituals in the Old Testament where they came in with sacrifices. Because they knew if they, had, if they wanted to communicate with God, then they had to cleanse themselves of all sin before they could enter the holiest of holies. So once they, once they brought up that sacrifice, they could stand in the presence of God and then not die on the spot. Because sin and God don't mix to the point where if you try to mix the two, like you will die. That's why Ananias and, and Sapphira got sucked into the ground because they tried to be in the presence of God while they were in sin and they ended up falling into the floor. Like it, it, it's not like it's not like Jesus wants to do this. It's not like God wants to do this to, to humanity, but it's like it, it's like it just does not mix. It's like a law. It's like it's like you you just cannot put two 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 beta fish in a tank without them trying to kill each other. It's like it's like you just cannot mix you know ammonia and bleach like you cannot mix it's like it, it just doesn't happen it's like a nuclear reactor it's like if you bring sin anywhere close to god there is going to be a nuclear reaction they have to be separate like it's not like god didn't want it to be this way but when man fell it just became this way and that's why god sent his son so that you now have an everlasting sacrifice. You don't have to bring doves into the house of the Lord. You don't have to, you know, even build him a physical temple to get to him. That now Jesus is now the everlasting sacrifice so that you can now be seen before the eyes of God free from sin and actually truly be free from sin permanently. Yeah, we don't sin here in Jesus name. Um, sin is not in our DNA because we're actually we're actually new creations so we get new dna of the new man not the old man we're not descendants of adam the last adam died on the cross so he so so jesus was the last adam meaning he ended the bloodline of adam he ended the bloodline of fallen man so that anyone who wants to have the new birth experience from jesus becomes a new creation when the bible calls you a new creation you are literally new like you are an alien to this world and you guys need to start acting like it of course it's unbelief it, it, it seems unbelievable when i say i'm free from sin it's because it's alien but we are aliens to this world we are new creations we we go beyond human understanding the the, the christian goes beyond the understanding of man and you need to live this way you need to act this way you need to believe it because it's not going to manifest if you don't believe that it's possible then there would be no need for Jesus. Jesus died so that we could be free from sin. It's because I decided I need Jesus that he set me free from sin. See, there's this also this um, fallacy in um, this belief about the Christian walk, that the Christian walk is about getting free from sin. When that just barely scratches the surface, the Christian walk is about getting to know God and and sin, you cannot know God through sin. You have to get rid of the sin in your life in order to begin to understand who he is as a person and his character. So it's like, it's like the Christian walk is about exploring the depth of the soul of God. It's about living day to day, about like just having awe and wonder of the world around you, of his creation, winning souls, you know, having joy, make, singing songs of praises and worship to him. That's what the Christian walk is about. It's not about struggling with sin. So when you make the Christian walk revolve around sin, you have given your mind over to the devil. The Christian walk has to revolve around the mysteries of God's heart, his heart, his, his knowledge, his love, his light, his word. There's so much of the word to read. Like, I, you know, I, I've, I've been a Christian for a little under three years. It'll be three years in May. So two and a half years I've been a Christian. I finished the entire Bible and still 
Each time I read the Bible, passages I've already read, I get new revelations. I get deeper into, you know, the realms of God. You know, the, the word is alive and living. And each time you eat it, you, you get life. So it doesn't matter how many, you, you know, it, it's not you read it one and done. You, you read it and you get to know Jesus again and again and deeper and deeper and deeper. He is everlasting, ever increasing, and his depths go beyond your understanding. You will never know everything about Jesus. So the joy of the Christian walk is exploring who he is and knowing that I'm never going to cap out. I'm never going to get bored because there's always going to be something new. He's always going to reveal to me a new realm, a new depth of, of his personhood. And, and, and when, like, and I, I just don't get how we don't get that. I don't get how we don't get that. It's like we we have to stop thinking of Jesus as like there's like there's like a cap to his glory. He is never ending. You there's so much to know about him. And we 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 have to focus on that. You know, it's it's like just give up the sin. Give it up. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Um Nobody thinks, someone said, nobody thinks there's a cap to Jesus. If you say that you will always sin, you're automatically putting a cap on Jesus. Because you're telling him that he can't do all things. When the word clearly says, he, all things are made possible through Christ Jesus. All things, all things, all things. So when you say, when you say you're always going to sin, you can never get free. You've already you already put him in a box. Human beings will always sin. Good thing I'm not a human being. I'm a new creation. <laughs> We're not of the bloodline of Adam, saints. We are of the bloodline of Jesus Christ. A completely different creation. Um, and, you know, we're still being perf perfected and glorified. We don't get our glorified bodies until, uh, until we return with our Messiah. Um, but, yeah. Mm-hmm. Completely different frequencies. Amen. Mm, any other questions? Alright, I want to eat my stew. By the way, kimchi jjigae is my favorite dish to make. Why do we repent if we don't sin? Okay, so repentance is not like a religious action. It's not like a humana, 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 and then you repented. Repentance is a lifestyle. Repentance means, to repent, it means to turn away from, okay? So repentance, it is not, it's an action, okay? You're not like, okay, you're facing sin, right? And then you guys go, Okay, I repent. And then you just turn back around. Okay, I repent. And then you just turn back around. But what repentance is, is it's turning around and walking towards God, towards his kingdom. You gotta go. Like, you gotta chase him. Like, seek after the kingdom of God. You gotta run. You gotta sprint after him with everything you got. And flee from sin. The Bible says to flee from sin. So repentance is a lifestyle. It is an action of seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness and knowing that everything else will follow. So, you know, people think that because they say a prayer, I repent, Jesus. And then that that's why they're no. But repentance is dying to self, picking up your cross, deciding there's more to this world than sin. And if I chase him, then he'll show me. And if I love him, I won't regret it. And he'll show me the mysteries and he'll show me the, the glory and the love and the miracles. And if I chase him. So it's, it, it's a lifestyle. It's a, it's a state of mind. It's the renewing of your mind. So we repent by allowing the word to restructure our reality. That's what faith is. Faith is a restructured reality according to the word of God. So that's what it means when you have to undo your old wineskin and get a new wineskin is you have to change how you see the world according to what the word tells you the world is supposed to look like. So the world, the world will say, 
There's no such thing as teleportation. But the Bible will tell you otherwise. You read the book of Acts and you see, you know, people teleporting. They're just taken from one location to another location because the glory of God was moving so powerfully in that time. So the world will tell me there is no such thing as teleportation. But the Bible will tell me there is. So now the faith is, is that now I've restructured my reality where now I'm like, okay, teleportation is now a possibility. Do I see it every day? No, but the word says it's a possibility. So now I believe it to be a possibility. The world will say that in order to get healed from cancer, you have to go through chemo. You have to pay for chemo. You got to go bald and all of that stuff. That's, that's what we learn from the world. But the Bible says that his anointing breaks the yoke, that Jesus came to heal and deliver us. That now, even though the world tells me there's no cure for cancer or, you know, you have to go through chemo to get cured. The Bible tells me that Jesus took every single infirmity in his body, stuck it on that cross and killed it and that he's faithful to deliver us. So now I believe what the word says. And so that's that's what repent is that renewing your mind where now I'm like, OK, you know, Jesus is above cancer. Jesus is above even teleportation. He's above everything he's above sin and and then once you have that faith you'll like i've seen cancer get healed many times i actually think it's like very like it's a very common miracle i think actually <laughs> in the body of christ i've seen it a lot of times like it happens all the time um but it's because the the church has to renew their mind and then the miracles can happen so we have to actually believe what the word says. And that's like, it's so beautiful. The Christian walk is so beautiful. It's unlike any other religion you've ever run into, unlike any other belief when you do it right. The issue is, is there's a lot of lukewarm Christians out there that lie to you. They're not good representatives of Christ, but the Christian walk, it's so miraculous. It's so precious. It's like, it gives you so much peace and joy and power, confidence, you're not afraid of anyone. You're not afraid of saying anything. You, you I, like, I feel like, you know, put me and Putin in a ring, you know, like, like I, I literally feel like I could take on Putin. Like I literally feel like I could take on North Korea, like, because that's what my, that's what my word has renewed my mind to do. You know, the world will tell you North Korea is a stronghold that no one can take down, that we need to deal with politically, or we need to deal with it, you know, with a war or something like that. But the Bible tells you that entire kingdoms can be destroyed in one day by God alone. That there was only one angel that took out an army of 180,000 people in, in Assyria. 180,000 people in one, one, one quick moment. The angel just waved the hand and 180, the entire army dead immediately. Immediately. And the, the kingdom was destroyed in one day. So now the world tells me North Korea is a stronghold. But the Bible tells me there's no stronghold too big for God. And if the Lord would see a vessel worthy for his anointing, if he will see someone who has the love of God in them, he would anoint them so that that person could go up to the 40, is it the 47th parallel? To the 47th, 49th parallel in North Korea. And wave their hand and destroy the entire stronghold of North Korea in one fail swoop. So that's what it means to renew your mind. That's what that's what the Christian walk is about. And it's 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 precious. It's like, you know, it, it's it, I don't have a worry or care. I just know I'm taking care of like, it's the best. I love I love Jesus. Um, yeah, a sin free Christian is someone who does not live in sin. Um, and yeah. A sin-free Christian, someone who does not live in sin. What do you mean it's not true? It's in the Bible. Mm. Man, why is my apostle not alive right now? Hmm. <coughs> oh, it's spicy, y'all. Mm. Someone said... Why are you not in hospitals with people who are dealing with cancer? Why aren't the people in the hospitals in the church? Do 
Jesus said, come and see. Y'all got to come and see. And he can't, if you don't have faith, he can't move. If people are in the hospital, you know, they don't have faith that Jesus can heal them. So why would I go to somewhere where they don't want Jesus to heal them? Most people don't want Jesus. Like, if I were to go to a hospital and I were to say, hey, you guys, I'm a Christian. I would love to heal you. They would say, go, get out of here. We're going to sue you. Like, let's just be so for real with ourselves. Like, let's just be so for real. And the Lord still moves online. Why don't you, if you're in a hospital, just go, go online and go and get someone to pray for you. Like, it is not, it's not my responsibility to handle other people's salvation. That's what y'all got confused. That's what people get confused. It's not my responsibility for you to get your salvation or your healing. It's my responsibility to tell you it's possible. It's my responsibility to tell you the word. It's your responsibility to believe it and to go where Jesus is moving. If you don't want to go, then that is your right. It's, it's everyone's right to stay sick. Like people have free will. If you want if you want to stay sick, you're literally allowed. <laughs> Any other questions? Am I Jewish? Inwardly, yeah. Because that's what the Bible says. That we are Jews inwardly. And that circumcision is not of the flesh, but it's of the heart. It's about circumcising your heart. It's about allowing the Lord to do heart surgery on you so that you can look more like Jesus. That's what it's about. Um, can you braid my hair? No, I do my own hair. Um... Actually, in Korea, it's actually rude to not make noise when you um eat your food. I'm good. And this is Korean food, so I actually should be making a lot more noise. Um, wait, what? Hold on, I can't read. Yes, I'm sin free, as in I don't I don't partake in sin anymore. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. So heart surgery is like there's the physical realm and then there's the spiritual realm. So there's physical heart surgery and then there's spiritual heart surgery. So heart surgery means that the Lord is going to take out all the nasty stuff in your heart and replace it with his heart. That's what the Bible says. It says that, this, that there will come a day where he will put his heart in you, a new heart in you, so that you can walk in his laws and in his precepts. And people have so much nastiness in their hearts, like bitterness, jealousy, hatred, envy. And only Jesus with, with, with his hands can change your heart posture to fill you with his love. It's only through Jesus that that can happen. You know, so many people out there are so selfish and they it's only Jesus that can set you free from selfishness, really. Because Jesus is the least selfish man who ever walked the earth. He died for those that hate him. He loved those that hate him. And he allowed victory to those that rebelled and he gives grace to those who don't deserve it. I mean, it's precious. Mm. Someone else has said another question, but it all goes so fast. Um, I never think bad of another or get mad or say anything mean or rude. Mm -mm. I never, like, honestly, like, and it's very supernatural, like, what Jesus did in my life. I have no bitterness towards anybody. I don't want or I don't meditate on ill will for anybody even when people like act crazy to me, like, and that's why the Holy Spirit is so important because he will correct you and he will prune you before you can, you know, act on your emotions. Because people do talk to me crazy 
sometimes and the holy spirit like he'll be like and i'll like like i could feel like 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 this i, I could feel like my like my own like spirit of offense trying to sneak up on me and be but before i could ever act on that offense the lord humbles me and says johnny he's been saying this to me a lot lately he goes johnny get over yourself i'm like you're so right you're so right and i let it go immediately and it's like the joy just pours into my heart and like that's how you like that that just renews your mind and um i just want everyone to meet the lord like i don't know like as a christian like what are you guys what do you guys think about if you guys are all sinning like what do you, i don't like i don't think about anything else except everybody encountering jesus like i just think about him all day all night i ask him about you know sharing wisdom with me and about mysteries and an understanding and even like when we see people like just strangers on the street i just think oh my gosh you just love him so much i just think jesus just loves that man or that woman so 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 much um and i just let it go i'm like you know you just you just don't so so <laughs> i i don't know how else to it's it's a miracle honestly mm. holier than thou is sinful I mean, holier than now is sinful. Well, it's not, I mean, what makes that sinful to be holy? D didn't God say be holy as I am holy? So, and when, if I were to be, if I were to say I'm holier than you, I mean, as a statement, that's just kind of the truth. <laughs> Does, isn't that just the truth that's not really an insult it's just the truth and then i mean that person can become holy too if they would yield to the holy spirit you know um but to say i'm holier than you as like a dig and if it's not true like if you're like have evil in your heart still like that's wrong but i mean if you're just saying a statement <laughs> it's just a statement like i feel like you guys like people just get so emotional kind of like they just they just think that people are trying like no one's insulting anybody some people are living holy and other people aren't that doesn't mean that those that aren't living holy can't they just have to repent you know someone said what i'm doing right now is i'm judging it's also it's only a sin to judge wrongfully the bible says to judge righteously to judge means to discern so it's not a sin to discern a situation and that's not a sin for me to discern something or to like that's why the bible has this entire book called judges about people that judged israel as a judge you guys know what a judge is right it's someone that comes up with a final verdict based on the evidence that they see so it's not sinful to judge. It's just sinful to judge sinfully. Like, it's just like having wisdom. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked a question and it's all the way back in the thing and I don't know where it's at. This soup is slapping. Slapping. Um what lessons okay a mommy miss said that's a really funny name <laughs> a mommy miss is hilarious sister that's literally hilarious you're funny dude um what lessons have i learned as of late um the lord has really humbled me um in two areas um number one i didn't understand anti-semitism i knew it was happening i knew it was real but i was literally talking to god i was like jesus i i know anti-semitism is an issue but i feel like i i don't see it but i know it's around so i don't really understand like like i'm like i'm like i don't i don't really see it honestly like i was just telling god i was like i don't really see it and then the war happened 
and then I was humbled quickly I was humbled very quickly because whether or not you're on like one side or the other like that's really not what it's about I just feel like I've just seen anti-semitism just kind of like rear its ugly head because like why are people in America like harassing Jewish people that doesn't make any like and we're not even like, like the war is not even happening over here like why are we like why are y'all trying to throw hands at Jewish people like literally like they're not in Israel like they I just don't that's crazy to me and so I was really humbled recently because um I just didn't understand and I I didn't get it and I didn't get why and then I started to understand the spirit of um Amalek I started to kind of learn about the history of you know Jewish people like even more and I know my Messiah is Jewish too um so that really really like I had to be educated a lot in that area um so I'm just thankful that Jesus was very patient with me um the other thing that I learned recently um, was that I, I am so good at like discerning. How do I even say this? I'm really good at discerning, you know, um, when someone's being rebellious or what a prophetic dream might mean or what the word might mean and all of those things. But when it comes to like my relationships with people around me i can literally be so naive i can be so naive like so 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 naive like i just would have no clue that that is what was going on until i literally have to have one of my friends tell me like for example like this is so bomb mm. Mm. Why is my apostle not live? Mm. Like for example, I'll give you guys an example. So in high school, there was this like I was on the dance team, and so I would like kind of be behind and like I would like stay behind after school and like do you know dance coach stuff. And this guy that I knew in high school, like he was just cool. And I would like be like I would just tell him stuff like yeah I would love to learn piano one day and then he'd be like oh I can teach you. like you can learn how to, like you can play piano on Garage Band I would take out his laptop teach me how to play piano on Garage Band we talk about music all of this stuff I was like yeah I was like I like Eminem and then guess what he he went and he burned Eminem's new like album onto a CD for me and then gave it to me like I didn't ask him for it but he like burned a CD for me and gave it to me. And, and it was like I was telling this story to my friend like literally like 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 for my friend to my friend like two years later like way after high school I was like yeah that was like one of the nicest things like he ever did for me like he just like made you know he, he would just make make me mixtapes like it was so like sweet like he was being such a good friend to me and she was like Johnny what I was like yeah he would make me mixtapes and stuff she would be like go wait he was in love with you I was like no, he was just making me a mixtape. She was like, Ajani, boys only do that for people that they're in love with. And I was like, I was like, what? I was like, no. She was like, Ajani. And I thought about it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. I'm like, I'm so dumb. You're literally right. <laughs> I It just right over my head. Right over my head. I owe oh, this. And, um. And that's why, like, I, and still to this day, I, even as a Christian, that is one of my spots. I just, it's right over my head. I just didn't like, I didn't, <laughs> mm -mm. like, if somebody likes me, like, they just gotta literally come up to me and be like, like, literally just grab me by the shoulder and be like, I like you. I literally can never tell because in my head, I would do like those things for anybody like I was like I just love making mixtapes for people so it never computes in my head that oh someone makes a mi made a mixtape for me so they must you know be sweet on me no 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 they're sweet on you like I'm like what and like oh oh like they open the door for me because they're just such a good friend because in my head I open doors for people like so I'm like oh yeah I do that for my friends all the time so if people open doors for me then they just must want to be my friend no no 
so I'm so like yeah I never yeah I gotta like rely on my friends for wisdom in that specific area and like social stuff like that because someone said are you scared that people will roast you is that why we can't come into your live um no you can't come into my live because it's mine and not yours go get your own following coward <laughs> like don't be a coward you know cowards cannot inherit the kingdom of god go make your own tiktoks and get your own tiktok and go live on your own tiktok don't try to hijack all my hard work because you want to try to impart devils into other people back up what there is nothing prideful look y'all <laughs> y'all don't <laughs> y'all can dish it but you can't take it like <laughs> the word is he is the truth i'm just saying the truth here i'm not <laughs> sinning i'm telling you the truth and the truth is is that if you don't want to preach on your own tiktok you're a coward It's not prideful. It's just calling it like it is. Calling a spade a spade. <laughs> what? <laughs> Y'all ain't... <laughs> I know, right, Brother Izzy? <laughs> Still, you know, you know, I've been going live for so long. And one of the common... Common things from when I was, you know, just just a wee one to still now. People don't like being called a coward. And you know why they're insulted? Because it's true. Because it's true. No coward is going to inherit the kingdom of God. You can't. You have to. Y'all you, got to repent from cowardice. Thanks, Christian. Anyways, we have any actual questions? Yeah, we're praying for Israel. Oh, brother Izzy, I gotta send you a um. There's this one page I found on TikTok that has like live war updates, where you can actually like know what's actually going on in the war, like who's getting what territory where. It's great. It's actually so helpful for me because I'm tired of all the all the political back and forth. Like honestly, we're done with that. I just want to know what's happening. You know? Mm. Okay. Now I feel like we got some new people in here. So let's talk about how I'm sin free. So how am I sin free? Because Jesus died for me so that I could overcome the powers of sin. He died for his, his bride. To give us the freedom from sin. And now people will always say, what about sins you don't know about? What about sins you don't know about? Doesn't the Bible say that the Holy Spirit searches all things, yea, even the deep things of God? So the Holy Spirit will search your heart for all sin in there. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to do that. And, and what sin is, is like sin is a transgression of the law. So it's going against the law of God. So as you read the word and you get to know the law, you will know what's a sin because you know what's the law. So you should get to a point in your Christian walk where you know what's a sin and what's not a sin. You know everything that is a sin and everything that could be a sin. So as a Christian, that's your responsibility to know the law. You should not allow you know, your, your Christian walk to go by and for you to not know what the law is. So how is it that I'm free from sin? Um, let's take a look at first John and, um, everybody will always say first John one, eight, first John one, eight, because first John says, 
If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, okay, so when, so by the way, if there's an, if there is an ed ending to a verb, then that makes it past tense, okay? So if it says, so it says, if we say that we have not sinned, past tense. We make him a liar and his word is not in us. So, yes, we have all sinned past tense in the past. But we're talking present tense. We're Christians now. So that's why 1 John 2, 1 says, My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. So 1 John 2, 1 is saying that everything in the first, first chapter is all so that he can explain to you how to not sin it says right here my little children these things i write to you so that you may not sin that's n-o-t not not n-o-t not sin not sin okay now that's why in first john 3 1 John 3, 6 says, whoever abides in him, okay, now see, this is another active verb, okay? So you have, an, so an active verb is something happening present tense. A past tense verb is something from the past. So in 1 John, 1 John 1, 10, it's talking about past tense sin, okay? But now we're in the present. It doesn't say those that abided in him, it says abides which is active okay so whoever abides in him does not sin whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him so someone said why should we repent daily you don't repent daily repentance is a state of being it's not an activity you do it's not a religious right that you do Repentance means to turn away from. It means to renew your mind. So when you repent, you've made a decision to live in, in, in a state of repentance. Like it is a state of being. It is not something that it's not a, a moment in time. It's a way of life. It's a lifestyle. Okay. So that's why it says whoever abides in him does not sin. Does not sin. Okay, first John three, um, verse eight. Okay, this is very important. Okay, he who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. So, if you guys are saying that you sin, you're basically saying that you're a devil worshiper. I don't want you guys to be devil worshipers. And then it says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil so it is for the reason of sin it's because of sin that that's why jesus manifested that's why he came in the flesh so that he could destroy the works of the devil what is the work of the devil sin so jesus was manifested to destroy sin in not only on the cross, but in the life of a believer, all sin, all sin. Okay, so that's why it continues in First John 3, 9. Whoever has been born of God does not sin for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. So if you are born of God which as a believer, you're called to be born again, then you do not sin. So if you are sinning, that means you are not born of God. If you are sinning, that means that you have neither seen him nor known him. And if you are sinning, that means you are not abiding in him. Okay, that's the transitive property. All right, if A equals B, then B equals A. So if it says whoever abides in him does not sin, then it means that if you are sinning, you do not abide in him. 
So you have to, you have to, as a Christian, you have to actually be real with yourself. Um, if you're in sin, you have to know there's something wrong and that I don't love Jesus as much as I thought I did. Because if I did love him, I wouldn't be stabbing him in the back by choosing sin. If I did love him, I would choose his laws and his word over the lusts of the flesh. If I did love him, I would have crucified my flesh, picked up my cross and followed him with everything. Um... And so you have to be real with yourself. Only the truth can set you free. If you if you don't come to the truth that you're a slave to sin, then um, you're never going to get free from sin. You're just going to keep deluding yourself that it's okay for you as a Christian to be sinning. And it's not. Because if we stay in sin, then God cannot hear us. Um, John 9 verse 31. Now we know that God does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. So who does Jesus return with? Does he return with sinners? He returns with the saints, not sinners. A saint is someone who is free from sin. It's someone who does not sin. So how can you, someone who is in sin, return with Jesus? If you're a sin, he, he can't do that. You have to be a saint. So in order for that to happen, you have to actually pick up your cross, crucify your flesh, give up your old desires, renew your mind, really make the choice. Make the choice. It's all about choices, okay? So any other questions? Just the New King James Version, the regular Bible everybody has. No, saying, saying, you, you, saying you're always going to sin is actually the sin because it's what sin is actually devil worship so you are pledging your allegiance to satan you are a worker of iniquity do we know what iniquity means iniquity means sin so there will be many that say to jesus lord lord i did all these things in your name and he will say depart from me you workers of iniquity so all of you workers of sin Mm -mm. Jesus will reject you. It's delicious. Mm. I'm drinking, drinking slash eating this delicious kimchi jjigae with pork belly. Delicious. You can eat pork if you're a Christian. I don't know what Bible you guys are reading. The book of Acts made it clear. He's made all things clean for our consumption. In the book of Acts, you guys remember? The Apostle Peter had the vision of the pig. And, and the Lord declared it right to be able to eat pork. Why do I have a star of David if I believe in Jesus? Jesus is Jewish. My Messiah is from Israel. It's to honor the, the covenant that he, that he gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's now that covenant that now I, by grace, get to partake in as a Gentile. That he fulfilled the promise of the Gentile church. That now I can be a partaker in the grace that the Lord gave his descendants of Abraham. Oh, geez. I just kind of feel like you guys are just like throwing a fit. <laughs> um, so I'm not really like, concerned. Um, someone said, what do I think about Romans 7, 15? Everyone always brings up Romans 7. So first of all, before I get into it, because I'll get into Romans 7. Um, the Bible did not always have chapters and you can't forget that the epistles are letters and the epistles are trains of thought, full trains of thought. Okay. Oh, cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead. Oh, yay. Oh my gosh. Yes, Jesus. Yay. Okay. My apostle's about to go live.
I'll, I will go off because um, my, I, I go to 5F church. Um, and so my apostle, she's always traveling throughout the week. So she's in Seattle right now. So um, I'm trying to catch her preaching. So once she goes on stage, I'll leave here. Um, yes, exactly. Romans 7 is about unconverted man. Um, but anyways, the epistles, they're letters. They are not, uh, and it's not like you can't go through the word like you file through a catalog and you just pick, cherry pick verses kind of thing. Um, you have to remember that it's one full train of thought. So you cannot read chapter 7 outside of chapter 6 and chapter 8. Um, and, you know, chapter 7 has actually kept so many Christians in bondage to sin because they read it um, with no understanding. And, you know, a part of me wants to be like, maybe the education system is like failing people. But I think that people actually just don't have the ears to hear. Mm! My apostle's live. Oh, wait, hold on, wait. Um, Romans 6 1 says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. It says it right there. What shall we say? Shall we continue in sin because grace may abound? Certainly not. It says it right there in, in Romans 6. And, and you know what? People will say, it's right there, Romans 6, 1. And people will say, oh, well, what about Romans 7, 15? For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree that the law... I agree with the law that it is good, but now it is no longer I who did it, but sin that dwells in me. And people will say, oh, that means that sin is always going to dwell in us and we're always going to sin. No. The Apostle Paul is talking about the carnal man. He's talking about the carnal man. Because then he says, I got to go because my Apostle speaking. Um... Because then he says, because then in this same chapter, he says, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So you guys are sinning because you guys are serving, you guys are allowing the flesh to lead. Because he knows, okay, my mind, I want to serve God. Because this is talking about the carnal man. They want to serve God, but they can't because they're in the flesh. So then what does chapter 8 say? Chapter 8 says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So it's saying that when we were carnal, I literally have to go. I'm like, I'm getting so full and lethargic and I want to listen to my spiritual mom. When we were carnal, we were under the law of death. And we were under the law of sin. But it says right here that now we are free from the law of sin and death, meaning that you're free from the bondage of sin. It says that in Romans 8. So you guys got to read Romans 6, 7 to 8, like all the way through, because the Apostle Paul is walking you through a train of thought. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. So it says you're not even in the flesh. You're in the spirit. So it says, yeah, you're always going to sin if you're in the flesh. But that's why Jesus put you in the spirit through his through his Holy Spirit. Simple as that. We all sin and fall short. That's why we have the man who did not fall short dwell in us. He gave us his righteousness as a gift. He gifted us his righteousness. This is all in the book of Romans. He gifted us his righteousness. And when we have the supernatural power of God, the devil doesn't stand a chance. Amen, mom. So many people think that the devil's power is so much bigger, but it's just because they have not encountered God's power. And so it's true. It is big when there's no power of God in your life. So this is why right now, right now, mm -hmm. it is revival. It is the end time revival. And God means serious business about restoring his power to his church. Right. It's been lost by and large. Right. He means serious business. 
This is not something optional. This is not a matter of preference. You know, there's just so many denominations these days, and the culture of Christianity is, is, seems to be choose what you want. Right. There's so many choices. There's so many styles. But it's not true. There's one way. One way. God's power must be there. We must be vessels of God's power to help the people who are oppressed by demons. Yes. We have to have God's power. It's not a choice. It's been so rare in the body of Christ. So many don't realize that God wants you, every one of you, to be a vessel of his power. Mm -hmm. Amen. Real. It's real. Not all just of you ministers on a stage, not just one person, two person, handful, every one of you. The Bible says all who believe these signs shall follow them. And some of these signs is they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. They shall cast out demons. All who believe. Is anyone a believer today? A believer of Jesus Christ? Woo! So, guess what? These signs should be following, following you. you. Amen. Amen. She's my spiritual mom. And if they are not 